Welcome to the White Tail Legacy Podcast, coming in your ear holes. And this episode is just going to be me. I wanted to get this episode out now because this is the time that people are doing that late season scouting, that off season scouting. Um, there's no rest in whitetail season, and this is one of the most important times to to make an impact on your season for the following years. But I think on a lot of other podcasts and a lot of other people that I hear talk, um, they talk about a lot of stuff that matters a little bit, but they don't really dig into the stuff that matters a lot. Um, so I'm going to break it down pretty, uh, pretty simple for the things you actually want to look for and the things you actually really want to put in the bank and leave some of the other smaller stuff just as details to add to the story, but what you really want to focus your time in out there while you're covering this ground. So getting people to make this possible, starting off with Exodus Outdoor Gear. Guys, the new rival cell cam is live. I got a couple at my house ready to go out. Absolutely love the look of this cam. Very sleek, very small, very simple. Um, and it's just a it's a plug and play, man. Turn it on connected to the server and you're you're in the game getting pictures on your app real simple cam um they really simplified it from the render uh, with no viewing screen and uh you know just one button on and off i really like the simplicity of it makes it really simple makes it real easy to set up out there in the woods go to your scout tech app see it's working but that's the 180 dollar five-year warranty cell cam the best warranty in the business and you're getting a cell cam you can literally hook to a solar power, which they offer, and leave out there for five years. And if anything happens to it, it's under warranty. So that absolutely blows my mind. You can leave it on a tree that long, and if you have any problems, they're going to cover it. Um, like I said, in the future here, I did go to Waypoint, so you will hear some ads um, before the show, um, which will be new, that are linked in. That will be coming within the next month. I did start a Patreon account for anybody that wants to support the podcast. It's uh, just White Tail Legacy Patreon. Um, I am releasing exclusive content about what I actually have going on in season in detail in there. Um, Exodus also gave me a code for just Patreons to use for discounts off cell cams. Also have going to be giving away a new rival cell cam for just my Patreon members. Um, and they're getting all that exclusive content. I've already released one podcast, going to do another one this week, um, where only the people that are on that Patreon account can listen to that. So if you get that's something that you guys might be interested in, you want to get in those giveaways, make sure and look that up. Um, it's awesome. You could support the show in a really small way or a really big way, and I appreciate it a ton. But let's get into people. Let's get into the actual show. We just got done with the people to make this possible. Let's get into the actual show. So late season scouting. Off season scouting, a lot of podcasts are a lot talking about it. I've had guests on here talking about it, and they all hit good points. But a lot of the focus is on finding bedding, finding scrapes, finding tree rubs, um, and all that matters a little bit. But it doesn't matter a lot. Like it matters. It's a little piece of the story. Um, but I'm gonna break it down how I late season scout, how I utilize my time. I have four kids. Um, so my time is my most valuable asset. So when I go out to late season scout, I need to have a plan in place for the property that I'm on instead of just going out there and kind of just going through the whole thing, um, especially if it's a bigger piece of public and I, I can't make it happen. So the first thing that you want to do is, is the buck that you are wanting to scout for in his area, is he still alive? Did the neighbor shoot of him? Do you you know if anybody found his sheds? Did you get a trail cam picture of him late? Did the neighbors say you've seen him late? Like, do you have any idea um, if that deer is anywhere remotely in the area or alive? Um, this is something I've done in the past where I've scouted really, really heavily for a deer in the off season and find up, you know, you find out in the spring and summertime that someone actually killed that deer. And now all the scouting that you did all, you know, off season is useless. Um, it's not completely useless, but it's useful, useless for that buck. You still have an understanding of the area, but all the stuff that you were planning for that deer is, is gone now because the deer is gone. So that's the number one thing. Um, that is a huge factor in how much you want to scout an area 
maybe you want to throw into a you know dive into another area if that buck didn't make it through the year. So the what the way I like to do go about it before I start any any really good scouting is I go and pull all my trail cams. So if I have trail cams on a property, I still have SD cards out cams out right now that are still running. Um, I need to go pull all those before I get a really good idea and process of how I'm going to go about scouting this year. So you pull all that, all the cams, look through all the data, and then kind of understand what deer made it. You get those pictures late, um, and then you have an idea of, okay, this would be a target buck this, this year. It was target buck this year. I'm going to go for him. But, you know, Last year he was close. Maybe he'll be interesting this year. Maybe that's something I'm going to dig into. Um, but that's something that you need to figure out um, before you do a, a, a mad scout of that ground. A lot of people talk about sheds when they're scouting. Like sheds are great to find, but that little piece of intel from a shed is very, very small detail to how you're going to kill that deer. It might not even be in the remote area of where that deer lives or he's, you know, just dropped a shed on random. So it's it's a nice piece of intel to have, but it's not something that's a major factor like a lot of people put onto it. So one good way to pull all your cams is when you're doing shed hunting. You know, you can hit the edge of the fields where your cams are, go in there, pop them, grab them. Um, and you can scout as you're pulling your cams. But once you get those cams, you get that intel. That's when you need to make that plan. Okay, this buck's alive. This is how I'm going to scout. Um, and then once you pull those cams, you can go through and you can kind of look to where that buck spent most of his time. So if you're on public, well, maybe that, that deer spent most of his time in the Northwest corner and you didn't have him on any other cam all year. You had him count cam up there multiple times throughout the year. Well, that's where you need to spend 90% of your scouting time on that property. If you plan on hunting that deer and that deer is still alive. Um, you can kind of do a big swath of the other stuff, but I wouldn't heavy, heavy scout that area if you don't plan on hunting. You're wasting time if you're trying to cover as much ground as I am, um, and time is limited. You kind of want to go to where that deer was, and without that trail cam info, you don't you don't know. Um, so, is the buck still alive? Pull your trail cameras. Next next step is was there a shooter buck on that property? Was there, did you see a shooter buck on that property? Is there a shooter buck on any of those cams? If there isn't a shooter buck on any of those cams, and maybe that's your only place that you have to hunt, I wouldn't spend a lot of heavy time scouting that. I would try to be finding a new, new piece of property to hunt. I would take the time that I planned on scouting, on looking at maps, making phone calls, knocking on doors, and trying to get on where a shooter buck might be. You can't kill a giant deer if there isn't a giant deer there. You now, if there's one that you might be interested in, cool. But if, you know, there's just a bunch of basket rack stuff that you're not going to shoot there, don't don't write the property off because you never know might, what might come in. But don't spend a lot of your time and assets going in there and, and walking that place over and over trying to figure out how the deer are using it when there's not a deer there you want to kill anyways. So. If there isn't a deer on there that you want to kill, look for look for a new piece. You know, maybe it's public, maybe it's private. Knock on some doors, um, and then that's when you want to do that really in depth scouting. That first time on a property, you want to go in there and really dig into that piece and go all out and try to figure it out and see if there's any you know good deer on there. And that's when the rubs matter. That's when the scrapes matter. You're trying to see just what kind of quality of deer are there. Um, to see, you know, what kind of sign is being left. But uh, if it's if it's a if it's a piece of private, maybe just heavily scout. You've been hunting the north of it, and it's a big piece, and you're not really getting on the deer. Maybe go a little further south and heavy scout that. See what the pressure's like. See what the deer signs like. Um, and that's one way that you can not waste your time on a property that doesn't have the age class or the kind of deer that you want to kill. I've done that in the past as well. Got a piece of property. It's set up really good. You got your stand set up. It's easy to hunt, and you continue to hunt there. But there isn't a buck that you really want to shoot there. You're kind of waiting for one that shows up like randomly a couple times a year or something. Those deer are extremely hard to kill. When you could have another place that is holding that quality of deer in the area, and you can go in there and scout it out and try to figure it out. Um, and that's the time to do this now. Is 
this is the time of the year to knock on the doors. This is people, maybe their lease is up. Maybe they're, you know, they're done hunting for the year. Maybe there's no one on the piece, but this is the time of the year to ask for permission because it's the best time of the year to scout. You can see the most sign it's open. Um, and it's the easiest to get around the woods. It's not thick. It's not crazy. You know, brush everywhere where you can't see three foot in front of your face. So going back, you know, figure out if their buck, your buck is alive, pull all your cams, get all the intel you can from your cams. Um, if there's a shooter on your property, go in there and try to figure it out. If there's not try to find a new spot or a new piece of ground. That's the the biggest basics I can tell you for for off season scouting. Now getting into a little bit more detail, um, if you have a single buck in mind, where on a piece of property, like I said, and you had three cams, you got them on all year, and you didn't get them on anywhere else. That's where you need to spend most of your time is in those areas where those pictures came from. Try to figure out what time of year you got the picture of him. And why you think he was there before you go in there and scout. Was he in there bumping for does? Was he in there in October and he's bedding somewhere going bed to food? Was he in there in December and he's going somewhere bed to food? That's something you need to think out in your mind before you go in there and decide like, okay, I'm scouting for a buck that's here in December. So I'm scouting for beds that are right now. Um, and, or I'm scouting for a buck that was here in October. So I need to think about what the cover is going to look like in October, what the food sources are going to be like in October, or I'm scouting for a buck that was here in the rut. Well, that's a completely different. You need to scout the travel, the travel corridors between the bedding, see how he's using that, see how the wind works for that. So really having a plan on how you're going to scout an area per a buck per the time of year is just as important as going in there and seeing the rubs and seeing the scrapes and looking for sheds and looking for the be- buck bedding. That's huge, popular right now. Buck bedding, I, there's guys that do it awesome. I've killed them off of beds as well, but it's a challenging way to do it unless you have a lot of time to hunt where you can throw a lot of sets at these beds or you have a spot where it's just consistently where a big buck beds. Um, cause there's spots like that where, you know, on a certain win, it might be not be the buck, but there's a pretty good chance there's a good buck in there. Um, so one way that I really love to start when I go out there scouting, um, is I like to start on a fence crossing. So a lot of these private ground, um, you know, they used to have cattle on them. Sometimes the public used to have cattle. There's fences around the ag. So you can see where most of the deer are hop that fence throughout the year. This is the perfect time where they're hopping the fence throughout the year and they got that grass that's not growing back. There's that big circle where all the tracks are in and you can start there. Okay. And this is, this is where they're feeding. This is one of their major food sources, obviously throughout the year on and off, you know, late season, they might've hit it harder. So it looks like it's really high traffic, but you know that the deer are hitting this throughout the year. Start there and follow it back. Whether it's the fence line going to the neighbors, start on your side of the fence, understand how the deer's coming off your neighbors and, and crossing that fence, and then coming onto yours. If it's public going on to private, go to the private line, you find that fence crossing coming in. If it's a fence crossing off an ag, um, go to there and start. That's a great place to start trying to track a deer back because that's where a lot of people run cams anyways on them, those major fence crossings or creek crossings where you can get that direct line of travel and get those, those pictures. So especially if you have a buck that you're interested that hit that, that fence crossing multiple times throughout the year, go there, think about the time of year and what he was doing, and then, go, then start going into the woods or then start going into your public police and think about why that buck would be there. Okay, it's, it's October. More than likely, he's, he's on a bed to food. So what's his direction to travel to bed? You know, what, what was the wind direction that day and what's his direction to travel to bed? Go to that fence where he hit the ag. Even if there's not a fence, you know, find a heavy trail that goes out of that ag. A lot of times there might be four or five, six of them that come to that, go to that ag. Hit all the trails. Follow that back in and figure out where you think he's bedding. It's the best time of year to do that. You're going to be able to see the most sign. And a lot of times 
you start walking a trail and that's when you run into those scrapes and that's when you run into those rubs when you get closer back off the edge and you get closer to that bedding you start getting to that bigger buck sign and then that's when that stuff matters when it coincides with other factors that actually can help you so when you're out there doing that and you find a trail that you're like oh yeah this is this looks good this is where i think you know this buck's coming through mid october maybe he's in daylight i did get a picture of him in daylight on trail cam here um how can i set up so scouting isn't just trying to find the buck it's trying to find how you're going to kill that buck so when you go in there scouting you need to be looking at where can i get a stand hung on this thing how am i going to access this what's it look like it's wide open now it's going to be the best advantage for the deer to be able to spot you it's going to be a little better in October and then get slowly worse through the cover, you know, be able to sink in there. But what can that buck see from just not, maybe not even in his bed, but just from the direction you think he's traveling out of his bed? Where, how hard can I push in here to get in the stand? You know, how loud is it going to be me getting in here? It's an, an oak flat where in October it's going to be crazy loud because the leaves are dropping and it's crispy and loud as hell or is it a crp fill where i can slip an edge and cover and be really quiet getting in here think about the wind you know what what are the what's the wind going to be doing on on if he was here on this wind how am i going to access this to get in there um and then while you're in there start looking at the trees if you're a hanging hunt guy great look at trees you can get into you know i can get into this and i could shoot over here or I could get over in this tree and I could shoot out in this angle. But also think about the amount of cover that's not there right now that's going to be there in October and November. Because sometimes, excuse me, you pick out a tree this time of year and then you go in there in October and it looks like a completely different timber. It looks like a completely different world because it's so thick. You can't see more than 20 feet, so you have to keep that in mind. If you're a guy that likes to hang stands and leave them permanently, go in there and figure out where you want to hang a stand. This is the absolute perfect time to hang a stand. This is the furthest distance away from what you're going to have conflict of actually bumping that buck when it matters. So it's nice weather. You can get out there, enjoy it. You're not going to be sweating hanging that stand and you can hang that stand and leave it for six, seven, eight months before you come back to it. And you're even honey. You know, it's just, it's literally the best time of the year to do it because your your impact is so low right now um these bucks will handle getting bumped more this time of year than they will any other time of year um so get in there and hang those stands and let them let them set you know so find a major crossing something that gives you a direction of travel if you can associate it with a trail cam that's even better associate it with the time of year that the buck was there Walk that off the ag, off the creek, whatever direction you think he's bedding, and then go back in there and try to figure out where he's bed. You might not, you might not be able to find the bed. But you might be able to get to an area where, okay, this is this is laying out where a buck might want to bed here. I'm on a finger point. It's getting a little thicker. There's a little flat here, and that bowls down in a low spot. This is a really good spot. And then just go through all the process of how that buck survives. You know what he can see, what he can smell, and what he can hear. That's, that's what they live off of. So that's what you need to try to figure out why you're out there is, what can this buck see as I'm coming in? What can this buck hear? What can this buck smell? You can beat those. You're, you're in the game every single day if he gets out of bed before, before daylight. So um, when you're in there and you got that buck, you know, break him down on, I got him on this trail, but I don't have him on this trail on trail cam. Why is he not using that trail? You know, you can't bank the trail camera 100%, but if you ran that cam all year and he wasn't on there, there's a reason why he doesn't use that trail. Maybe it's you walk more on that trail and there's ground scent over there. Maybe he doesn't like to go on the main trail to does. Maybe he likes to go on a downwind trail to does. There's a reason why a certain a buck does a certain thing throughout the year and if you can associate him with a trail camp pick and a time of year, that gives you so much intel to go in there and really decisive break down that area. Um, you know, if you're in, if you're on a brand new piece, this is this is gets hard. You know, you get in there and maybe it's a big piece and and you're you're on a main trail and it breaks off in three or four different trails. 
the best case scenario, especially if you don't have any trail cam data on it, is you just gotta you just gotta cover it all, you know, and it, it's tough. Um, but you're gonna know what quality of deer are there by the time you cover that property. Um, you're gonna know kind of what the pressure looks like. You know, late season or off season scouting, you're not only scouting for deer, you're also scouting for pressure on public land or neighbor pressure, like, okay, there's tree stands over here or there's marks on the tree where a tree stand used to be. There's still cams out here. Um, there's a heavy foot traffic trail coming off this point and going down this edge. Um, there's there's public ground around here where there's this like heavy trails where you know if a guy's going east to west, he's probably on this trail going through this woods. And then you got to think about if you hunt there per the wind, if someone walks in, what are the deer going to do? Are they going to use that area? Or are they not going to use that area? Um, so when you're on those uh, on those big pieces, you just got to cover it all. And it's a struggle. It's very time consuming. And sometimes it's a yearly thing for me. Like I'll pick out a 200 acre block and try to cover it really good and kind of figure out what it is, how the deer are using it. And this time of year, man, the trails are so pronounced because that grass hasn't come back. So all October, there's, you know, nothing growing hardly. November, there's nothing growing. December, there's nothing growing. January, there's nothing growing. So they have got like full-blown cattle trails out there for you to follow this time of year. Um, And especially if you can get a little snow, that gives you a really good idea of the main travels. Um, And people say, well, it's late season now. We're not, we're not really worried about the deer that's using it. We're trying to use that on our trail cam data. We're trying to figure out the main trails that are being used in the direction that they go. Then when that main trails runs into something that you have trail cam data off of, that's when you start putting the pieces together of why was this buck here? What time was he here? What, when was he here? He was on this trail. I know this trail goes from here, cuts through this point and goes to this ag. More than likely he was headed to that ag. More than likely he was headed to this doe bedding that's in between this point and this ag. You can really narrow down what he was doing, but you have to know what the ground looks like on top of that trail cam. People look at a trail cam picture, but you're getting a 20 by 20 picture out there in a direction of travel. And of either side of it, it's just, you have no idea. But if you have heavy trails to go off of, there's a good, you got a good idea of kind of what direction he was going through the woods, working the area, going down the draws. Um, they they kind of map it out for you. You know, they don't they don't map out what time they're there, but where where they're at, they kind of map it out for us. So on those big pieces of property, you know, make a plan, try to break them down into chunks and try to cover them the best you can. Um and then like I said, don't don't the rubs and stuff are awesome, but don't get so dead set on, man, there's a giant rub over here, I need to hunt here. Or man, there's a ground scrape here, I need to hunt here. Cuz in my past knowledge, running cams on scrapes, the big, big deer do not hit those scrapes in daylight. They are nocturnal scrape. They hit those scrapes at dark. If, they do, if you are going to kill a buck on a scrape, it's going to be that third week of October, late second, third, fourth week of October is your best bet to catch a mature deer hitting a scrape. After that, they are nocturnal creatures on scrapes. or they're not even hitting the scrape and they're going downwind of that scrape. So I think a lot of people see that sign, they get so wrapped up in it, but it's a nocturnal spot that that deer is hitting and they don't have any trail cam data on it and it's a new piece, so they throw three, four sets at it and never see any deer using the scrape because it's all nighttime. And by the time that you hunt over that scrape a couple of times, you've done put your pressure and scent there. And when he comes to hit that scrape at night, it's already too late. But if you can find that scrape and then associate that trail from the scrape back into what you think is his bedding, and you can get past that scrape safely without bumping him, that's when you start connecting the dots on these deer. Um, so don't get wrapped up in that, oh man, there's a, you know, there's a lot of good sign over here, big buck sign, high rubs or big rubs, or there's a bunch of buck bedding. It's really hard to know. You can know buck bedding, but it's really hard to know what kind of caliber bucks using that bedding like it's i've seen giant buck come out of beds where little bitty saplings are rubbed by and then i've seen forked horns rub on pretty good trees and they're bedded by like four inch 
trees that are rubbed. Like it's hard to know what deer's in there bedding. You just know that it's a buck. There's a buck bedded there. And bucks have multiple different beds. They're not a one, two creature bed. They have a whole bunch of different beds that are going to travel per wind, per area, where they want to set up that day. Um, I think a lot of it's temperature based too. Sometimes they want a cooler bed. Sometimes they want a warmer bed. Um, so it's, it's tough to really pinpoint that buck bedding, but the guys that do it do an awesome job, but they also have a lot of time to hunt and they throw a lot of different sets on buck beds until they get lucky on one, you know, not that they're getting lucky killing the deer, but they're throwing enough sets on beds until eventually there's a buck in that bed that they're hunting that they want to kill. So, um, uh, as for your old property, we covered the new property, the old property Man, those doe travel routes are key. You can see those doe travel routes right now. Bed to food, money. Like there will be a cattle trail, the easiest trail from that bed to food, going through the woods. You're going to be able to see where they hop the fence. You're going to be able to see where they cross the creek. And that's going to give you so much intel for the rut of how these does are working and how you can get in between the bedding and food in the morning or the evening with these does to try to catch a buck with them. You know, is it? You're not looking for buck sign. You're looking for how are the does using the property? How can I hunt this property and not educate those does, not have them does win me? How can I access this property without those does seeing me? Um, that is so key because if you bump your does, you bump your buck. It's just part of the game. It's really hard, especially if you like to hunt early season and you're hunting and you're seeing does. You got to get out of the stand, go back to your truck. Maybe you got to go back towards the ag to exit. That's something that you have to think about, but you can really figure out how to eliminate yourself from running into those does if you know how they're traveling through the woods. So along with those doe trails, look for that small offset trail, that, uh, that trail that maybe runs horizontal of the doe trail doesn't get used a lot. I know a lot of people talk about that. I've seen some bucks on it and some bucks some bucks just cruise downwind, not even on a trail. They just kind of maze you through the woods during the rut. Um, but it's a good line to think, okay, this would be a good spot to maybe set up on to, to learn a little bit more about the property where I'd be safe. A buck was on this trail. It wouldn't win me, you know? So you don't want to go to that doe bedding and say, I'm going to set up 20 yards off doe bedding the downwind side so I don't get winded, but there's a slight trail you know, 15 yards from that downwind of you, you need to go on the downwind side of that slight trail and just verify what's there so you don't get back door and get busted. So um, this is a great area. This is a great time to look for those non-pressured areas on public. Like I mentioned, you're looking for spots that don't have any tree stands in it. You're looking for spots that, um, you know, there's no trail cam sign. There's no marks on the trees, but pressure can also come in other, other ways. Maybe there was, um, maybe they had a, a, you know, a machinery going there and tear a bunch of stuff out. This recently happened to me on a piece of public this year, three or four years ago, they went in this area. It was really good. They went in there and ripped a bunch of saplings out of the CRP, cedar trees, all kinds of stuff, kind of bulldoze it. It was flat look real you know wide open i went in there this year um just doing a quick scout shed hunting pulling a cam and uh man there was saplings and cedar trees and brush of olive and brush and the deer sign was a hundred x what it was when there was nothing there and that's something that was pressure oriented change but it wasn't hunting pressure it was the state doing work out there pressure wise you know maybe there was a you know, somewhere that people like to fish a lot and the beaver dam blew out and now they can't access it. That's also something that happened to me where, you know, there's some backwaters that built up and the state went out there with an excavator and blew the beaver dam out. And now there's no water up there. So people aren't going up there and fishing and the deer signs more because there's less people going up there and fishing. Um, and you know, in those October days when it's nice out. So there's a lot of different pressure to look for, but hunting pressure and ground pressure, you know, on private ground, maybe your neighbor did a whole bunch of bulldozing and opened a bunch of stuff up. Maybe he put a giant food plot in. Um, that's going to be pressure oriented where he's changing the property to alter the deer. And that's something that you can figure out now instead of in season 
so you can game plan. Well, maybe maybe you want to you know pull some stands away from that bulldozed area that's wide open because maybe that's where your bedding was and now it's gone. You know, um, maybe he logged some walnuts and when they logged the walnuts, they messed up a bedding area and you're kind of banking on that area and now you don't really know. You know, you can't go over there and scout it 100%, but you can see that he logged and make an impact on your side. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, pressure-oriented things that you can do to help yourself out throughout the year. Last thing I want to cover is sheds. Sheds are awesome. I love shed hunting just as much as the other guy. I spend an absolute shitload of time out there shed hunting. But do not take very much stock in where you find that shed and where you think you're going to kill that buck. Sometimes, you know, you might find a, a, you know, a shed and a bed and okay, that buck was bedded here sometimes. But a lot of times that shed's random. It dropped. It's out in the edge of a field. It's in some CRP. Um, it's not, it lets you know that the deer's alive. It lets you know that the deer's in the area. And it gives you a small little pin drop of intel on where the shed would be um take mr freeze for example he i killed him on the north side of the property um and he his sheds were found on the south side as far away from his sheds on my piece of property is where i end up killing that deer from where i found the shed um and the only reason he was there is because the bean corn switched he liked the switch where he bedded late season with the bean corn switch and where he spent his spring um, so he dropped his sheds on the south side. I killed him on the north side. Where the bean switched, that's where he went. So this just goes to show you that if you do find the sheds, awesome. Is it going to help you kill that deer? Maybe, but probably not. So don't take a lot of stock in those sheds. Don't take a ton of stock in that sign. You know, it, it's if you're out there and you see sign light up in season, that is different than what you're looking at now. You don't know if that sign was laid down the second week of October, the third week of November, first week of December. You just know that there's some good sign in there, some good buck sign in the area. You don't know if that that is a daylight area, you know, or a, a scrape that only was hit at night. You don't have cams on it. It's a great place to run a cam to get intel what bucks are there and to see if anything's daylight, but it's not anything that is really like man i'm gonna kill my buck right here because there's this giant rub here like that i feel like that is promoted or i'm gonna kill this buck right here because i found one of his beds here i feel like that's heavily promoted but very few guys actually kill their bucks that way um so keep that in your mind but don't put so much stock into it that you're just dead set on that and then you're not scouting anywhere else because you think you've already figured out the game because you found the bed or you found the sign that you're looking for get all the other details because in season you're going to you're going to want that other stuff um there's one other thing that i wanted to mention that i can't oh the uh if i mentioned the beds you know if you find some beds great mark it down mark it on your map um this time of year if you bump some amount of bed it's kind of hard to know whether that deer is going to be there or not so that's something that you just got to think about if he's if it's a late season bed or if it's an in season bed but the main thing is, is get as much that the goal of late season scouting or off season scouting is to get as much intel as you can physically get, whether it's sign, trails, sheds, other people sign, different things on the property, you know, different things on the, the private that, that, that they're doing, anything you can do, make notes on your phone, then come back and piece the trail cam data, your previous trail cam data, with what you have now. Is stuff going to change? Is stuff going to stay the same? Did the trails on the previous data look good as this year? Previous trail cam data and late season scouting go hand in hand. You're trying to verify what was on that cam. You're trying to figure out what was going on out there. And when you can put the pieces of what was going on on the cam out in the woods in the real life there's light bulbs that start going off in your head being like oh this is why that buck was there or oh this is why the does are really used in this area and that's why i got a bunch of does on cam here it's because there's good browse or there's good bedding um but it you know you can do that in season but now you can do it scot-free you can go out there and just 
destroy ground, walking all over it, putting your sin everywhere, bumping stuff. And during season, it's going to be like you were not there. So don't miss the chance to learn literally everything about your property you can and put it into Intel for this year. Because you, you can literally kill your buck right now if you put the pieces together. You're going to have such a better plan than what you got going on. The buck I missed this year, JoJo, I got Cam still soaking on him right now. Just to verify he's alive. That's all I want. I need a couple pictures to verify he's alive. Okay, let's go in there. Make some game plan. Let's pull all the cams. Let's look at all the intel. Is this a deer I want to go after? I got cams still on public, soaking, that I need to go get. But I'm not so adamant on getting them because they're still collecting data. I'll get them, you know, when I get out there and scout. And, again, I'll pull the intel, and I'll do my, my final big, big scout with the intel that I collected from the trail cam data. So main thing with off-season scouting, don't miss your opportunity to do it. Don't take giant stock and all those really popular talked about things, the rubs and the sides and the scrapes and the bed. Find your own way out there. Figure out how the deer are using your property. It's prob- it could be completely different than any other guy you've ever heard. They could be doing something off the wall. You know, figure out what they're doing out there. Look at your past trail cam data. Try to put the pieces you can together and then react and plan for next year. Hang the stands. Make the game plans. Trim the shooting lanes. Think about where you're going to hang trail cameras. Do that now. Make a plan so when season comes and you, you, you've already got a plan laid out and then you're just throwing audibles into your plan as you get intel going through the year. You get a good velvet picture. Okay, there's an audible. Well, where was that deer in my past trail camera data? Okay, he's here now. He was, he was, you know, I got a picture of him September. Well, I had a past trail cam data of him November. Oh, I went in there and I scouted and I thought about how that deer would work the doe bedding in November. Man, I need to, I need to get ready to hunt that deer in November on that doe bedding. You know, that's how you kill these deer. Everybody says you're always a step behind them. And the reason you're a step behind them is because you're not planning out like right now. You know, you plan right now for attacks in November. Verify what you got. See if it connects the dots. If that deer's still alive, good chance he's going to go back in there around the same time. So that's how you make stuff happen right now. So that wraps up postseason scouting and what I actually think is important. Um, cover ground. Cover it valuable if you have limited time. Um, and if you don't have big bucks on your property, go somewhere else. Hard to say it, but find somewhere else, knock on some doors, go to a piece of public land, whatever you can do. Well, I appreciate you guys listening all the way to the end here. It is the off season of whitetail officially all the way across the United States, but there is never an off season. There's always something we can be doing. So try to make your time valuable. Try to prepare now so when season comes up, you're not so swamped. And if you prepare now, I guarantee you have the best season you ever had this coming October, November, December. So love you guys. Appreciate you tuning all the way to the end. Um, Always do the right thing. Try to leave a legacy. And White to Legacy is out.